Welcome to the Performance Formula with Jody Martins. Right, Russell, um, so good to have you back on the Performance Formula podcast. Um, I'm looking forward to today's sort of area that you and I are going to be exploring a little bit. And I think we, again, at the back end of our last conversation, we sort of mentioned this idea of approaching sport from a place of what I can get versus what I'm here to give. And I know you've got some thoughts on that that you want to expand on. So I'm kind of happy to 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 put it in your hands and lay it all out on the table and then uh, we'll unpack it from there. Thanks Jody. This is a this is such an awesome topic for me. It's it's something that I felt you know, I felt a little bit at odds in the game, uh, particularly in the higher up you go professionally. You know, if you get involved in the game, often uh, the game becomes cutthroat and uh, demanding. And as a result of it, it's all about what I can get. And in fact, I think a lot of the times it's actually encouraged, you know, when, when you're contractually bound in a way, the objective is trying to be as professional as possible and uh, position yourself in such a way to get as much as you can. because because that's the objective, right? Or it seemingly is. If I think it's a wrong approach, I think it's something that uh, kind of creates a sense of self selfishness, right? A self-centeredness. And it's something that you can't get away. So the, the aspect of relationships is the thing that rescues us from that um, kind of narcissism of self, as I mentioned before, because it's the nature of, of, uh, of the spaces, right? to actually force us down that self-centered route. Um, and we need relationships to kind of draw us back or draw us into a more pure, pure, purer way and more healthier way and more natural way of engaging with ourselves, with the game itself, the spirit of the game, and with everyone involved in the game. So when you mentioned about, you know, whether you're a giver or you're a taker or, you know, what you can get from it, that's the... That's where I think relationships automatically reflect that. Oftentimes, and I've had this personal experience, I'll share this. I've had times where the games actually, you know, it goes to the dark side again, like I mentioned before, where relationships is actually the first casualty. So in the pursuit of peak performances, in the pursuit of the win, in pursuit of me getting my aspiration achieved, often relationships is the casualty or the things that get sacrificed, get starnished, sabotaged or stifled, right? It gets tossed aside mm. and bridges are broken in the process of that. And I think we are left, um, you know, poorer uh, as a result of it because the objective of, of the spirit is actually to enhance relationships. And that is a clear kind of, uh, sign that we've gone against the spirit and bring the game into disrepute essentially without knowing it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sure, relationships, yeah. Um... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm playing through my head, like how, how straight up do I talk here? You know, it's not always easy when you know people are going to listen to something to just, you know, share, share some stuff off your chest. But as you were talking there, I'm like, I, I, my immediate sort of thing that happens in my head is I go, okay, yeah, I know I've been in professional environments. What was the relationships like? What are people sort of, um, if I say people, the, the, the cricketers essentially in that, in that sense, you know, how are they, how are they talking about others? How are they, um, and it might not be the others within the same team. So if you think of, say, a professional setup, there's normally a main team and then there's a team below. So I was sort of involved in that team below kind of setup and little bits maybe with a team above. But it was always fascinating to see people how they talk about the people that's above them or below them in that sense, right? I'm contracted to the A side and you're contracted to the B side, okay, at a professional level. And it was always uh, sort of just fly on the wall, sort of sit and just notice sort of what's happening. And and maybe at the time I wasn't even as conscious about it. This is more my memory that I'm trying to sort of go into now and try and remember uh, because you and I are touching on these topics. And and I clearly remember moments where some people had not great things to say about other people. Like, I wish they would just fail, you know? Like, sure, we're competing for the same spot, you know? Well, I wish that guy would just retire, you know? They just, 
They're just taking up space. I'm so much better than them. I'm performing so much better. That guy, he's old and, and I, they should just move over now. Um, and so I, I think what I enjoy about what you sort of bring to the table in this conversation is I have a, a very good relationship with a, a, a head coach who um, we've had a sort of relationship where whether he knows it or not, right? Whether he knows it, I'm sure he knows it about it now because we had conversations about it. But at the time, whether he knew about it or not, a lot of things might get said about where we're going to go together and what we're going to do together. And so expectations get built. And we have a good relationship. We're getting along really well. But I would find myself for years at times being very frustrated, disillusioned at the quality of that relationship, you know, because the, the promises, so, so to speak, wasn't delivered on. Now, I never held that against him um, because I sort of knew behind the scenes that it's not really, he's not really in a position where he can just make a call. Um, which was sad, right? Very frustrating and all these things. But I clearly remember one day just getting to a place where I said to myself, hey, I know that this relationship I have with this individual is too important for me. The relationship is more important than what I can get, <laughs> essentially. And and to be fair, that took four or five years. This is not some decision I just made willy-nilly overnight or, it's, you know, but I felt like I did not want to be in a relationship, friendship, you know, with a, with this coach just because I perceived that I could get something down the line from it, you know. And hey, that door is still open to this day that something might happen. But our relationship, I feel, has evolved into a better place where I can speak straight up with him. He can speak straight up with me. I carry no expectations. We don't speak on a daily basis, you know, but we do make time for each other. Um, he'll make time. He's a very busy guy. He makes time for me in his busy schedule. And I, I think a huge part of that is because we were able to, and, and I don't think it was just me. I think it was from his side too. I was maybe just the one that prompted the conversation because I remember when I had it with him, he was like, Sheesh, that's like, like such a weight off my shoulders, you know? Like, and so maybe there's something in that as an example. I just know that it wasn't easy, right? It really wasn't easy, but got to a place where that relationship, I knew that was more important. Like if I'm old one day and he's old, it doesn't matter what we did in life. I'd still want to be able to pick up the phone and phone him and say, hey, how are you doing? That to me was more important than my next coaching gig I could get with him. But for a long period of time, it wasn't that. And very much just like those cricketers who would sit in the environment and, I don't know, say nasty things about other people. I too then said nasty things about other people. I did the same thing because it was, why is that coach getting that job? Why am not, not me? You know, why can he pick that one? Why can't he pick me? But yeah, um, I don't know if there's anything in that for you to riff off of, but it's sort of where my head went, right? I'm playing these sort of things through my mind. And I'm going like, yeah, I get it, right? I get why these relationships are important. I've seen sort of both sides of it. In the same way, I've got a friend that we don't speak at this point in time. And that's very frustrating, you know, very frustrating. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, the guardedness of 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 uh, you know protecting territories, uh, domains, and the advancement or the potential that it can be, all of those aspects they tend to sour, uh, you know, the sweetness of what relationships could be, the potential it could be, right? And the, the system often because of uh, the system of cricket, the ecosystem of cricket, the way it's designed or set up, or even just our natural inclination, our natures is to be driving the self towards accomplishment. And often that threatens those genuine, sincere relationships, right? And we have to navigate that from both parties. But I think the sincerity or the authenticity is essential. And this is the, the key of how to go through it. It's, and I've discovered that without acknowledging the spirit of the game, right, which we don't do at all, we're often going to fall by the wayside relationally. Right? We're not going to relate to each other in a mature fashion because the spirit is not there to kind of, as I said last time, potentially guide us, rescue us initially from our own self-absorbedness as well as 
protect us from making wrongful decisions that's tarnishing or detrimental to the relationships itself. So because we relate poorly to the spirit, right, which is of almost like a code of correction, right, that keeps us on that straight and narrow, um, when we're going to forego relationships as a result of it. So this is why I've experienced the same sort of thing, trying to bring in what I call relational equity, right, the equity of relationships within the game is the entry point of where the spirit arrives, right? So if you awaken yourself and surrender yourself to the spirit of the game, it's all about starting on the basis of relationships, on a pure fashion, on a mature way, basis. You know, that conversation you referred to there where you were being forthright and upfront and, and that weight that gets alleviated from, uh, from your mate, right? Um, those are now more pure spaces where you can engage with each other in a fashion that's a little bit more transparent, a little bit more open, and you can grow together, right? So independent of whatever happens, uh, you know, this it's the main thing about using the relationship as a means to an end. So if you and your example, which I have done the same thing, right? I may have seen some form of connection to, uh, you know, call it a big name within the game, and you see this potential to get somewhere as a result of knowing him. So. You know, the old catch-all phrase, the cliched phrase, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Now, mm -hmm. that becomes almost like an evilized attempt at, I'm going to use this association for my welfare, for my benefit, because whoever I can get seen alongside will place me in a, in a position uh, of uh, prosperity, of, of prominence, of acceleration, right? There's a whole bunch of things that come of it. But that's why I think the delay in the progression is essential because it matures both parties, ourselves and the person who feels like he can be the source of that advancement for you. That's not true. It can't be based on one person. That person might mm. recognize value in you and point you out, but essentially it can't be put on one sole individual. It doesn't matter what capacity that person may have or position that person may have. It can't purely be on the basis of that person's referral or well intent that your progression is, is stemming from, right? It has to be broader and bigger than that. So we have to give that sense of credence or respect to the spirit that will lead us into that authenticity and create the opportunity. If we do that within the cricket space by saying Mother Cricket will look after you, why do we need to mention a particular name other than Mother Cricket? Right? We use that phrase as a reference to the spirit of the game, right? So if Mother Cricket, which is this karmic, type of entity or body that's going to look and preserve you and accelerate you, right? If we can surrender to that, in that sense, why do we at times lose sight of the fact and then start saying, no, it's this particular individual that I know quite well and we've walked a journey. This person is the doorway to my success. It's not true. Whether that's from us, that's thinking they are, or whether they themselves think they are the door. They're not. They're unfortunately not the source of life or sustenance for us, right? It's only mother cricket or the spirit of the game that can do that. And hence I'm saying, if you look at it, let's get a little bit more practical because relationships ultimately is the objective of what the spirit is there about, right? If you look at the make, like we spoke about the preamble, the spirit is only pointing to the, pre the, the preservation or the acceleration or the enhancement of relationships, right? The healthiness, the wellness of engaging with each other and the game itself. That's all it's doing. In fact, the mistake we make is we tend to codify the spirit as if in something that needs to correct mistakes. But the end mm. goal of correcting errors is actually the enhancement or the tighter, the togetherness of those bonded relationships. So even if we transgress one another in some shape or form within the game, it's about finding a way back to each other, <laughs> right? So I put it to you that, you know, even the laws, the laws of the game, it's not necessarily an ethical thing. It's not necessarily a moralistic thing. It's not about keeping yourself pure, like I said, ethically or morally. It's actually keeping yourself pure relationally. It's a way for you to keep connections tight and sincere and genuine so that it doesn't become this just ingenuous grab at glory at the expense of others. I've experienced it firsthand where, where no, you're not going to give him my accomplishment, you know, as a catalyst, as an example, right? I'm here to help you accelerate 
your performances and maybe uh, you know get certain objective accomplished. And if you're not going to hit that target, then you are now a scapegoat. You to blame and you must go because you're not serving my agenda. That's a bit cutthroat, right? And as a result of it, um, you know, you could be foregone as a result of not hitting the goal professionally. But why does the relationship also have to go? Why do I have to mm. scrap the relationship in its entirety, right? Mm. I may have not been able to help you get the objective accomplished, but now the relationship is also um, let go of, right? And that just shows that the relationship was based on uh, shallow or unstable ground. It wasn't mature and it wasn't on real footing as a result of it. But the spirit of the game is purely there to point towards relationships, the preservation of it, and the promotion of those relationships. So the mm. law is actually a code of relational, it's a relational code that says, if you do this, then you must make right with your opponent because you created a separation or a conflict between. So let's find an amicable solution so that we can be tighter. It's like in any relationship, right? If you get into a marriage, you're not going to have a fight now and then that's it, that we're walking out the door, it's done. No, no, no. The fight then fusses is to make us tighter, is to make mm. us closer. But there must be at the time maybe the foregoing of the ego. You know, I'm at fault. I'm sorry. I'm to blame. Will you forgive me? And not just will you forgive me, but can I find corrective steps to improve the disparity that I may have caused, the disruption, the trauma that I may have caused? Then we have uh, that justness comes through, right? And that's the purpose of the laws of the game. The laws of the game is not to put you in your naughty corner. The laws of the game to say, wait a minute, you're trying to advantage yourself unfairly over another outside of the spirit of this game. So how do we find a way to fairly reconcile this relationship? Who needs to do what? And can we buy into this thing, not just because we've been found out, but we're actually loving the, and cherishing the, the essence or the, the genuineness of this relationship, the cherishedness of this relationship. And hence, we're happy to take whatever form of penalty, whatever form of sanction that might be, because it's going to get us tighter and we're going to enjoy the game mm. more, you know, including mm. those that are watching from the outside because they're seeing a reflection yeah. of real life unfolding. So I said a lot there, mm. Jody, um, but yeah, no, the relationship. Uh, and I the think there's a, yeah, no, that there's a, there's a lot of good things in there. I mean, the little note I wrote you at the start seems almost irrelevant at this point in time, but I think you spoke at one point in time about the, or well, my sense was that there's, if you go down the route of the give and the get, right? Uh, not what I give, what I can get out of a relationship. And I think your example there that you give about how a relationship with somebody is only there to serve some purpose in terms of some outcome. And then when that, that outcome's not achieved, then, well, then the relationship also goes, which essentially shows that the relationship was sort of on a shallow, shallow, a shallow foundation, right? It also made me think of, an, like what I wrote here, is that there's a closeness to new relationships at times. So because we're so potentially, right, if you're in it for the get, then you'll only seek the relationships that can enhance, even though they most probably won't, as you, as you rightly point out, right? But, that, but, if you, but if you approach relationships in that way in the game, like I'm only looking to build a relationship with Russell because Russell is this coach, and so because he's this coach, he's going to help me. If that's the only reason, then I think the game leaves you down the line in a very poor place. A very, very poor place because not everybody's going to coach their whole lives. Not everybody's going to play their whole lives. Not everybody's going to umpire their whole lives. Um, and so if you're only in the game for what you can get out of the game and you'll step on whoever needs to be stepped on in order to get to the top, then I think you'll be poorer for it down the line and the game would not enrich you as a person. I can see that from some level, there's a potential performance benefit to this, you know, because you want to one up somebody else and I'm going to connect myself and there could be some 
some things maybe around motivation and around drive and around um, maybe creativity and your ability to connect with people that there can be performance benefit in the immediate potentially and maybe that's why a lot of people go for it because they get the kick out of it and the kick maybe gives them a little bit of a sense of like whoa i can or i got this guy's backing or um you know i'm moving up in the world and i'm earning a little bit more or whatever it might be the the reality is and, and so part of the problem is and it's a thing our brain does yeah i think is and i don't i'm not the I'm not the fundi on this and I'm not going to say all the words right, but I have this rough understanding in my head that our brain does this thing where in the immediacy of the moment, it's like this thing where you say to yourself, I'll exercise tomorrow, you know? I don't know what you call that. There's a name for it where your brain like tricks you to say that tomorrow you'll have the motivation. Tomorrow you'll make right for it. Tomorrow you'll eat better. To, and, and so maybe that's part of the problem here is that our brain does this thing that says, oh, the relationship will be okay tomorrow, you know, or, or I'll be okay in 10 years from now. But in 10 years from now, you may be sitting alone on a balcony somewhere and you don't know what to do with your life and you've got no, nobody there with you. And a lot of cricketers go through that. A lot of athletes go through that. You know, they, they step on people potentially all the way to the top. Now they come to the end of their career and they've got to say goodbye to everything that they've built and then they don't know who they are and they've got nobody around anymore. That is that is more the reality, I think, for a lot of people. And so there are a lot of athletes. And so I, I, this idea of, again, just this idea of playing with the spirit and that the, the relationship and the, not just necessarily the quality of it, but the the intention to almost like foster good relationships with people and build lasting relationships over your performance gains, over your career, over as like the starting point. Like, I think there's just so much benefit down the line. And, and who are you to know that maybe in 20 years from now, maybe in 20 years from now, you, you've got to lean on someone and you pick up the phone and you phone them and they say, sure, I'll help you. No problem. And maybe that's the thing that gives you your riches in life. I don't know if you want to talk about it from a monetary point of view, right? But if you don't take care of those relationships, then maybe 20 years from now, you can't make that call. And, and, I, and again, like I'm loving these conversations because I'm not sitting here feeling like, oh, geez, I've just, I'm perfect, right? And I don't, I don't want it to come across as that. Um, I, hopefully, and I don't know where your head is with that, but but I really feel like, I have come away with this stuff, right? I have sort of my own understanding about this. And I have, I feel like I'm very protective over my relationships with a lot of people. And relationships are important to me. But I've also know I've messed up a whole bunch. There's a lot of people I can't call anymore. <laughs> you know, in 10 years from now, I know I wouldn't be able to pick up the phone and phone that guy. It's just no chance. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I didn't take care of things there. You know, I maybe stepped on them. And we never know. Maybe the guy that you step on now in 10 years from now is above you in some way and you've got to go ask them for something. You don't know. Like, you don't know how life is going to turn out. And I think that's where this idea of mother cricket, the spirit of the game, doing things in the right way, where it needs a lot more consideration, right? That needs... There's a part of me that... And, and maybe you can comment on this a little bit. There's a part of me, I know we had a conversation, I'm not going to mention who it was a, a while ago offline about a team that we sort of saw them do some stuff on social media uh, where it, it looked like seemingly they were focusing on relationships quite a lot. And then your sense was behind the scenes, but hang on, I know the people there and I don't know if this is really true of them or if it's just sort of a facade that they're putting up. So a lot of us can think, okay, we build these relationships and we do these things, but we do it in a way, potentially, to, to make it seem like this great relationship. But actually, it's just a facade I'm putting up. Actually, it's something fake I'm doing in the name of this grand idea. I don't know what your thoughts is on that. Yeah, 100%. I think I'll probably echo it and say differently. Uh, the question that one has to really... but you know, you have to ask it from deep within, like deep down, be introspective about it and be real with yourself. If the relationships are mature, it's going to bring realness and, and it's going to be realness to your experience as well, as you said, but it's not only going to be evident 
whilst you're playing and whilst you're going after the pursuit of whatever you're wanting to get from the game, right? It's how well you give yourself to the game authentically that's going to resonate with real relationships that you can depend on after your time in play, right? Hence this, um, you know, the phraseology of what's in it for me. If you're having that approach, it's most likely going to backfire you because people are going to consider you if you're quite uh, a narcissist, someone that's uh, self-absorbed, and um, and then you use your talent and capabilities to kind of just gloat about it and you progress, but you're still a narcissist ultimately. You're not a nice person, right? In essence, um, you can have top achievement, but at the end of the day, you'll probably feel quite lonely sitting on the top of your throne once you've achieved it. Now, if life is all about the relationships, I'm not just saying it's the be all, end all, but this is the starting point of what the spirit is all about, to try and introduce you to the value of relationships and then to progress it in such a fashion that it brings you into a sense of maturity of yourself personally, genuinely, as well as in relationship to other people. So that you don't have the top of the hill experiences and you're only there on your own, but you've welcomed a lot more up to the hill either, or you yourself have come down the hill and, and build community with others who are more likely to be at the bottom, right? You can go both ways and, and you kind of got your feet on the ground, but you can still experience the heavenlies, right? And welcome others up there in a, in a genuine fashion. So it's either what's it in for me or what can I give? What can I bring to the game? How can I be of benefit? How can I add value to others? So in any marriage, I said this to you earlier as well, in any marriage, if you come into the marriage and like, what can you give and how can you serve me? That's a sure recipe for disaster. <laughs> so if you do that in any context, if you go into the game and you say, how's this game going to sort me out, which is likely where it's going at the moment with the free agency and so forth, and, and kids wanting to aspire to be part of the game because, look, I can have this lifestyle. I can be a super me through the game, right? And that in itself now creates a wrong approach to it because what can I give is sacrificed. And therefore, you're not necessarily going to find those relations. You're going to draw other forms of narcissists towards you. And together, you're going to band together and say, okay, so how do we get this collectively? Let's be like a, like a gang that's going to go out and look after itself, right? And look after our own self-preservation and self-promotion. So that's why the spirit is the only thing that can rescue from that. So you asked about team spaces that are propon uh, saying they're proponents of this relationship, right? Of these sincere relationships. And they often phrase it this way, we are family. It's not mm. quite the family, to be honest, because one moment you're chosen and the next moment you're out needing to be redrafted in another family. So that's not genuine. That's not real. So you can't be a family and sacrifice members of the family at the same time. So that can't be as realistic. But you can have genuine relationships where whilst you're there, you've added value. Freely you receive value, so therefore you freely give to another. And hopefully that impacts in a powerful fashion that even if you separate temporarily, those individuals and yourself can call on one another later on in life or in different modes or different fashion. So you're building this consistent bridges of benefit for each other purely out of the relationship in itself is the benefit, right? Because that's what the spirit is saying. If the game not about just benefiting each other relationally. Hence, the law is a relational code, not the moralistic code, not the finding fault code, not a need to keep you in your place. No, it's a matter of you're going to challenge me and going to challenge me to surrender my ego at times or take a blow, a loss, and I'll be able to sincerely applaud you. And in doing that, we're enhancing excellence. We're not abandoning ambition or excellence. We are enhancing relationship and excellence at the same breath. And we're also keeping it genuine and keeping it real. Right? So, in essence, to come back to what we started with by saying, it's not what I know, but who I know. That is an accurate statement. Who I know matters, but genuinely, without needing to use you, the person I know, for my advantage. Right? But can I add value to you? Can I be a, a source of, uh, of life shared with you, as opposed to you, my source? You now, I'm looking for a connection, a friendship, or an engagement with a mate, right? A colleague, so that I can share the life I already experienced. I'm already a winner, and I want to share that to you. 
It's like marriage. I'm coming into the marriage, not what you can give me, my wife. I'm you here for my pleasures. No, I'm here to satisfy your needs and you here to satisfy mine. As long as we keep that focus, the spirit of this relationship and marriage will be sustained. And it's going to keep us on the straight and narrow, particularly when we turn to selfish mechanisms. So it is a very much a selfless, the spirit creates the selflessness and the serving of another and from a genuine space. And then so, mm. why I say that it's a, uh, the other aspect of it is when you start going towards the desires of how do we piece the desires together for what we're looking to accomplish collectively, the relationships often gets a little bit tricky because how do we now connect on that basis? And that's, an, that's another conversation is probably how, what I got fascinated about um, with teaming, how you team well together from the wholeness where you know yourselves to be winners and as winners coming together to accomplish some objective and no mm. one is losing in the process. But that's a, a conversation for another time. One thing that I've discovered, um, Jody, and I'll let you comment first if you want. Um, I felt like a lot of these things where we engage with the game, we know it deep down in our hearts. It's very unnatural. It's very unhealthy because we're snickering at each other. We're backbiting. As you said, we guard it. I don't like this guy. I'm competing with him. One of the things I, I used to uh, suggest to some of the players, if you're struggling with form at number three, Go find the guy that's needing to replace you at number three, and you go and throw balls and serve him to replace you. Mm. Then all of a sudden, in you teaching him, you would learn and teach yourself in the process, right? And all of a sudden, form comes back to you because you became selfless. You were actually equipping your replacement mm. to take your place. And in you laying down your life temporarily in that fashion, you actually discover it, right? And form came back to you. So it doesn't mean that guy is replacing you. You'll wait his time, yeah. but you've laid down and served him and you've found a camaraderie and you've built a team culture. You've built a culture amongst each other and the relating purity amongst each other that the team benefits. Mm. I'll use an example. I, I mentioned that once because Jacques Colors at the rare moment in his life, right? Because he's one of the best uh, South African all-rounders, right? Statistically. Was out of form and he couldn't find form. And that was said to him directly to say, just go and find your replacement. Who's going to be batting at number three for South Africa if we have to drop you, right? Because no one wanted to drop you. But just go and try and throw balls to your replacement and see how quickly you'll find form again. In his case, it didn't mm. happen. It didn't need to because they persisted with him. And uh, he found some form of form eventually. But that yeah. would have been such a benefit to everyone mm. to behold. Imagine his teammates seeing that self selfless service. Right, mm. you don't have had a lot of these type of snickering comments on the side about certain groups coming together trying to advantage themselves or the other, all those sorts of unnecessary things. Mm. And essentially, yeah. this is the benefit of what the spirit offers us. Yeah, it's weird, right? Great minds think alike. I was thinking very much along similar <laughs> lines there. Um, I was thinking about number three batter, uh, not, a, not a specific person or anything like that, but I was thinking like, how do we make some of this stuff practical? And that was the exact same sort of thing came into my head. Uh, maybe what I just want to add on to that was, so what I heard in the environment speak was sort of the language in the environment where that, that idea came from was um, a senior batter, um, youngsters joined the team and the immediate response was almost like well with a lot of profanities in the, in the sentence as well but like what is this youngster doing yeah essentially you know and, and and that i think if i think of this conversation and where we've gotten to it and all our conversations so far i think if a, if a cricketer is out there or a coach is out there or parent and you hear that sort of thing like what the hell is this guy doing yeah then I think that's a quick, surefire way to then understand that, listen, we're busy with the wrong stuff here because you're only here for you. You see this person as a threat in, instead of, and I, I mean, if you go onto the field from a performance point of view and you're playing to not lose your place, the likelihood of you performing reduces. It's not a, sure, it might drive one or two performances, but it's not sustainable. It, 
in, in, if you're under pressure and the only reason you're playing is to keep your place, you will be struggling at some point in time. There's a tiny little bit of small portion of people out there that's tough enough, say, mentally to do that and get through it. And most athletes, I think, will they'll stumble. They'll stumble and fall. Um, and, and, and so I think that idea of we're all in it together. It, do, it really doesn't matter who's in the 11 on the field. We're a squad of 20. If you take rugby, we're a squad of 40. And I actually think that's something that Rassi Erasmus does really well. I read an article the other day about how the players are not, um, like they don't get so upset when they're not playing because they understand they're part of something, right? Wouldn't you want to be part of, just part of, this Springbok team that's just dominating two World Cups in a row, winning wherever they go in the world. To be able to just say I'm part of that is more important than saying I'm the lead player in that. And I think from a rugby point of view, uh, Rassi Erasmus has established that really well in some way. I didn't read the whole article. I haven't dug into this with a lot of depth or anything like that, but it just sort of speaks to me to that idea, right? Where in in cricket, where we come from, I don't know if I can say the same thing. I don't think I've been in a lot of team environments where there isn't a bitterness towards the people around you in some way. And and competition is a good thing. Healthy competition, I think, is a very good thing for, 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 for performance and potentially for relationships, you know? But if you can one-up your friend and then still give him a high five afterwards or a hug or a pat on the bum or whatever it is that you might do right and it's like a or a fist bump or whatever and you can do that with sincerity then i think we're sitting in a, in a better place um you know and, and that word in particular sincerity to be sincere with our actions to be sincere with our motivations for doing things and not wanting to do things to like i think that sets us up in a slightly better way versus when we really just out for ourselves down the line that gets found out either your performance suffers or you'll lose and be lonely one day or in some way in some way mother cricket will take care of you or mother mother sport will take care of you yeah I, I, russell i've loved this conversation um i don't know if there's anything else you want to add maybe before we wrap it up yeah, I think uh, you touched on something there. Um, it's a it's a loaded uh, discussion to go into later. I just wanted to make reference of um, you know when I started, and I'm giving a little bit more of my personal journey here. When I started, my focus, and I've got a bit of a library on personal development, and you know these were all just interests or passions of mine at the time, towards trying to maximize potentials, and I looked at different sorts of things. And one of the interruptions on that, or one of the things that felt awfully unnatural or off, you know, at odds, was the fact that it seems like I'm going towards, um, you know, self-promotion at the expense of other, you know, of expense of consideration of the, the impact that it might have on others in this pursuit of my own goals. And hence the, the consideration was, how do you integrate the benefit of this with another? Why does it have to be only me versus another? And it came across very strong, sitting behind an analytical computer, working out plan A, plan B, plan C is of how to overcome another. And then also saying, yeah, Stafford, we got one over you as soon as we get the accomplishment of that. <laughs> like, is it really about suppressing another so that we can rise? Does it have to be that way? Because it, then the, the, the hand slap that you refer to afterwards is not genuine. It's not sincere in the heart because you really wanted to dominate over another. And that felt very much at odds for me. So this is why I said that we needed the spirit of the game to rescue us from that. There's no other way that we will always lean towards this ego mania. It's part and parcel of it, right? And desire leads us astray in that way. And that's why this is going to be a loaded, a loaded discussion for later. We have to look at it because it creates this culture of taking advantage of another and advancing ourselves that way. It doesn't have to be this. This it's not like this piece of the pie that there's only so much that can go around. This thing is limitless, the spirit, right? And it actually creates inclusion. It creates comprehensive, you know, buy-in in a way. So when you spoke about, you know, just the angle of mother cricket, 
kind of giving you the opportunity to level you. It's leveling you so that they can get back to the core of what we're really, really after, which is to connect genuinely with each other, to grow those relationships in a mature fashion, and then still hit the targets of excellence, but together, not sacrificing anyone along the way. And that's the objective, really. You know, if we're starting to sacrifice another along the way, then it was only selfish intents, and we're willing to sacrifice it, right? Like, no, 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 I've got chosen, I'm selected. You, unfortunately, have to wait your time, right? So just imagine this as an example. We don't have the sense of empathy, and this is why we're having these discussions, because no one is talking like this. If you listen to cricket commentary now, no one is mentioning these things. They're just accepting that the current system is how it is, and we must speak towards the contract we have, whether you employed with a broadcasting agency, so you speak the language of that agency, or whether you employed with a, a union, you must speak the language of the union. So you're preserving yourself and you're preserving your contract. And it's actually written into the contract. Don't stand against us, right? But we're not asking about standing against it. We're just asking about fairness. How is your brand compared to another brand enhancing the game as a whole? Can brands come together and enhance the game? So bottom line, the spirit only has one thing. It's relationships and the relationships based on the golden rule, which is one rule only that sustains everything. Treat others the way you want to be treated. That's as simple as it is. Relationally, if you have the other one's benefit at your heart, you're going to treat them in such a fashion that this is what. So you can only give to another from sincerity what you yourself is willing to, to seek, you know. So if you treat others like you want to be treated, then you won't jeopardize or sacrifice others because you'll consider the other and say, my goodness, if this was me, through the empathy of what I had to endure, that person had to endure, I wouldn't want that. So how do I create reconciling this? How do I create a more sense of fairness so that the spirit of the game can progress so that we all benefit? But as soon mm. as you violate that one law, all the other laws, therefore, are going to start showing examples of it. Right? So when people start scratching the ball to take advantage, it's basically we didn't treat you like we want to be treated. Because if we were scratching the ball, like the Australians did, right? We, on the other hand, also at times examples of scratching the ball, right? What is it, Lollygate and Zipgate and whatever. But at that point in time when they were found to be scratching the ball, we were pointing out, look, 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 look. But we were also guilty of that, but we got away with it, <laughs> right? Yes. So that's why the spirit yes. is violated. But it's about how do, how sincere are those relationships between South Africa and Australia now? How genuine are those relationships? Not about the violation of the spirit. That's the moralistic or the behavioral side of the code. We're talking about how genuine are friends are the Australians, those guys who scratch the ball, versus our South African guys who scratch the ball. I can't remember who the captain was. Steve Smith and Fuff Duplessis' relationship. How Buff, tight yeah. is those relationships? You know what I mean? How tight are those relationships? How genuine? Quentin and it? David Warner. Yes, exactly. So that's my point. And then we watch these type of games, and the spirit is violated because relationships are not in hands. We get hearing about other than rubbish that we hear with Quentin and Warner, and that's how the game the game is being portrayed or marketed or um, put out there, and that's not what we need to have. In essence, the game has been put into disrepute, but we don't look at that. If I just use one example in terms of South Africa now, the frustration of the game has resulted in South African expressing themselves in a very obnoxious fashion against the spirit because they're considering themselves and their welfare and the lack of performances. But because the relationships are not considered, the impact they're having on the crowd, the youngsters in the crowd, when they're swearing in that fashion and using crude language, that is a complete disruption of the spirit. It's not what your school, cricket schools are, should be portraying. So just generally, those are all aspects of the spirit of the game that we should be taking into cognizance because we want a better form. And we can do better if we see the laws and the spirit as a rescue to us, because it is. Yeah. Yeah, true. I mean, I can't necessarily comment on sort of South African cricket 
I know there was sort of articles or something written about the language that they saw the players sort of said after and so one of the players made a comment on that. I didn't really look into that too deeply, but I think for me, the, the summary of this little conversation based on what you say there and sort of if I mull it over in my head is just this idea that if you're, if you're doing things in the game that harms relationships, whether it's your, and, and this could then, we haven't really touched on this, but the, the idea of the relationship with yourself, and I know that's most probably another conversation, but that's the most important relationship. If you're willing to, to sort of abolish relationships and just throw them away, then I've got to ask, well, how's your relationship with yourself? Because that's the first one that you're cultivating. And if you're, if you're not really healthy in that relationship space, then and, and we wouldn't know, right? I, I wouldn't know anything about any of these players. I've not spoken with any of them, really, other than one um, and not in a long time. And yeah, if, if, you, if, you, if you do anything to harm relationships, then you're not in the right space. To me, that's as simple as it is. And most probably, if you're doing things to enhance relationships, if you take care of the youngster in the team, if you're really have your teammates back irrespective of their race color creed whatever it might be if you if you're sincere in how you approach your coach and you know you ask about batting positions and bowling positions or where you i think rugby and those sort of sports are more specific about their positions from the get-go you know, won't really get a hooker asking to play fly half you know but batters would want to bat in a specific position I think if you're sincere in that, not just for your own improvement, but definitely for the betterment of the team and for the betterment of the people around you. And that's a sense that you'll get within yourself, right? That's a sense you'll have by yourself, for yourself in how you go about those things. That's a sense you'll have about the teams that you're in and how those teams are, are how they set up and how they're operating and are functioning and how your teammates are speaking to you. Or what you're hearing your teammates say about each other behind people's backs. And so I think if we can do things that, if, if you know you're in a space where you're looking to enhance relationships, then you know that you must probably more towards the spirit. And if that's primary, and if that's your purpose, and if that's where you're really there, yeah, you're going to hit the ball, you're going to kick a ball, you're going to throw it, you're going to jump, you're going to do all of that. But if you're really there to leave the people around you in better places, then, then I think you're heading in, the, in a better direction. I, I might not be able to say the right because we're all different and we all want different things. But in terms of these conversations, my sense is if you're doing that, then you are right with the spirit. Russell, I've enjoyed this. Eh? Um, yeah, I thank you again for your time. I mean, these conversations are... Um, weirdly enough, right? I didn't know where they're going to go, but weirdly enough, they're enlightening for me. And I hope that the people that listen to them feel the same. Please let us know in the comments below if you've got this far and you've got something to add into the conversation. Like, let us know, drop a comment. Uh, follow Russell on his social media, Spirited Cricket on Instagram in particular. I think he's sort of very active over there. Feel free to head over to my website follow me on socials, whatever, and, and engage with us, right? This is not a, I mean, we're not having these conversations just so that we can have them. We're having them too, so that there can be some participation and we can hear other people's voices and, you know, yeah, that's it really for this one from me. Russell, last thought, last word from you, last thought. No, it's been good. I enjoyed it as well, Jody. This is always a, a, an ongoing conversation, expanding our our engagement with each other, making it more and more like a champ conversation. So I'm looking forward to yeah. the next one. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. I'll see you then. Cheers. Cheers, man.